Parental discretion is advised. What's up, guys? This week on the Wrestling Mayhem Show, it's bad news for Bad News Barrett, rewriting WWE history, the very best of the very best Y2J, and did TNA do something good? Stick around. Want to have your business or podcast featured on the show? Contact us at info at sorgatronmedia.com. Subject line, advertising. Just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait. Hey guys, welcome to the Wrestling Mayhem Show, the only show where we mayhem. I don't know. Shit. That's true. That's, that's true. That's true. That that's true. That is true. Okay, yeah, we'll uh, go with that. We'll go with that. Uh, it's episode 398, two away from the big fan spectacular going on at the Hollywood oh, Theater no. in Dormont. I hope you guys join us for that. Uh, but this is the show where we get mayhemy. We get, or we're talking about wrestling and all that kind of stuff from the uh, Mayhem Studios here in Pittsburgh, PA. I'm Sorgatron. With me, as usual, is Papa Lunchbox. How you doing, sir? What's up, everybody? It is Papa Lunchbox here on the Wrestling Mayhem Show. Now, let me take a second to describe to you what this episode is going to be like. Every episode is wonderful. It's like sex in your era, but better than you think it would be. But this one in particular hmm. is going to be amazing. I want you to go back. I want you to remember back to high school with your first sexual experience with a girl. The fumbling, the heavy breathing, the first good sexual experience. Not the one in the back seat of your car where you came in the first like two or three seconds. We're not going to be like that. We are going to be great. It's going to be like 45 minutes of like heavy petting and, and a little bit of fingering and stuff like that. And then you'll get kind of a sloppy, weird blow job, but you don't know any better because it's your first one. That's what this Wrestling Mayhem show is going to be like. But in your brain and ears, your brain's penis is going to come all over the inside of your face. Also joining us from the Bronx, New York, uh, is Mad Mike representing the property of WMS shirt. How you doing, sir? I'm fantastic now that someone finally owns me, and the person that owns me is the Wrestling Mayhem Show. That's right. That's right. And also with us, of course, from San Antonio, Texas, is Eamon at Eamon to Please on the Twitters. How you doing, sir? I'm doing great. Uh, I'm excited for this show, especially the way that LB described it. I, to- I totally know what he's talking about to have that. That, that sexual experience in, in high school. I mean, I, I met many times. I'm I, all right. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Eamon has had all the sex. It's like a bag of sand, right, guys? <laughs> That's bag right. of sand? The crying points. has only points. just Eamon, begun. Points. It's the Wrestling Mayhem Show. You can, of course, find Tears out more points. about us. At WrestlingMayhemShow.com, we're in audio and video forms on iTunes, Stitcher, and YouTube, uh, and, and other places as well. Blip TV, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Roku via the Blip TV app, for example. Uh, you can also drop us a line. We're at that email address. Good times. Good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Also, Tell drop us, us a line. your high school sexual experience. Yes. Yeah, uh, yes. Yes. Uh, also, <laughs> drop a line to 412-206-WMS0. Uh, and let's get started with this show. The only way we know how with the fan mail. Amen. Or, I'm sorry, LB? Yep. Oh, it's LB's job now? Okay. It's LB's job now. Yep. <laughs> I claim totally, it. Totally, you I lay claim on it. <laughs> and here's why. Here's why. I just I did. We have to the listeners at home. There's a little bit of inside baseball. We have a document that we all share that has information about the show, and that's where we put the mayhem mail. So we have it all in one spot. Uh, there's a column to the right where um, you know if you want to read a particular email, you can put your name in. I laid claim to this email for one solitary reason. For the intro. Are you ready for this? Dear Mayhem M and M's, no, fuck, I fucked it up. God damn it! God, dear Mayhem and M's, if that's not the best, God, don't, Sorg, you've got to cut out where I fucked that up. <laughs> don't worry, I we'll cut it out. Don't edit the show, but you cut that out, Sorg. You edit that fuck up because that's the best intro anyone's ever written in a podcast. Don't dear worry, Mayhem and M's. Don't worry, we're definitely cutting that part out. <laughs> it's already <laughs> good. Hold on, hold on. Um, impact. 
is something that requires Eamon to be treated with blood pressure medication. However, I have to give them props for their making light of the horrible things they have done over the past 18 months. The funeral of aces and eights had me cringing at the thought going into impact this week, but I was rolling at the final product. <laughs> Eric Young was seen <laughs> crying for reasons beyond grasp to him. Anderson... <clears throat> Oh, excuse Sorry, me. Being terrible Anderson, the better known as the man who charisma forgot, according to Eamon, uh, started off by pointing out the fact that the gang <laughs> took Miles off his Harley and many, 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 many segments on the show. Angle lay to rest the bobbing head of D'Lo Brown. Joe took full advantage of the cold cut platter that Bully's ex-wife and father-in-law sent over. He also proceeded to take a six-pack out and, while distributing them to those in attendance, offered up the moment of the night. Joe, you in, Kurt? Of course, you're always in. Kurt reaches for the beer. On second thought, never mind. Joe pulls beer back. I hated this idea going, going in, uh, but I am glad I did not fast forward as this was one of the funniest things I have seen on Impact in a long time. Questions. Number one, I am curious. What are your thoughts of Big Show and his, quote, head injury? Eamon brought about issues with the idea of a concussion angle in TNA. And while Big Show was not quivering, he was obviously selling the idea of being concussed last Monday. Well, as we learned this Monday, uh, he's fucking fine. What do he's you guys okay. think? I'm glad they, um, they diverted I, from it. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned this on the show or possibly like in a hangout or something like that. Um I feel like minus the Triple H one, which was awful, um, WWE has actually done an amazing job, or a pretty decent job, I would say, of handling concussions, in my opinion, like concussion-based stories. Um, the, For example, the Dolph Ziggler stuff I think was handled really well, especially that match uh, with Ziggler and Del Rio. Um, and I, I don't know. I think the Big Show stuff <laughs> – I think the Big Show stuff makes sense. Um uh, I, I like the fact that it's it, both of them have tied into when Dorio super kicks people, it's horrible things for your brain. Um, so I, I don't know. I think it's cool. I think Kurt Angle um, coming back, I guess, from like serious, like I know that both medical issues, obviously, which is obvious if you like look at him and also like drug problems and have him like having a seizure in the ring and then coming backstage and just like drooling aimlessly. Like he's, you know, on life support or something. It's like, that's not the best. Yeah. You know. I also wonder, like, if if they decided to just drop it immediately because they weren't going to move forward with him and Del Rio again. Possibly. Because it was, because I mean, it was Del Rio that got him. Or no, it was Randy Orton. Because... Like, um, Orton has already moved on, obviously, to John Cena. Mm-hmm. So there's no sense in Big Show selling a concussion from Orton if they're not going to fight. Yeah. Yeah. I'm glad they moved on. All right. LB? Next question, number two. EC3 has been the most dom- on the most dominant of runs. Some may say that he is undefeatable. Uh, no, Check no, that is undefeatable. Gotcha. Undefeatable. I wondered why that was. Yeah. Uh, Check out Impact 365 if you're drawing a blank. With his advancement of character in the past few weeks, who is the first person you would put him in an actual feud with? Uh, I'm going to refrain from answering the the answer to this question. I don't watch TNA. I was going to say I don't know why they're referring to it as like an actual feud thing. I think I think the feud between Ethan Carter and that North Dur- that North Furnham Dewey Barnes feud, it's 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 taken in the, uh, the wrestling world by storm. I think honestly, <laughs> it's been well. We are quite spectacular. Uh, we are currently in the third of December. Exactly. So yes, absolutely. It's not a pun, LB. That's what we're calling it because we like Dewey Barnes. Yes. Um, it's quite all but, right. It's all right. <laughs> but no, I, I I like EC3. Um, who would I put him against? See, there's. It's not a lot of people in TNA I like. Um, <laughs> DJ Zima? Jeez, um, that's a good question. I don't think you're going to like where it's going, Eamon. I, mm, 
I don't think you're gonna like where it's going. Because even if they put him in like a basic thing against like James Storm or something, it's like it's fucking that's fucking James Storm, and James Storm's not that great. Um, or like like I can't think of the problem is TNA doesn't have a lot of like minor characters. A lot of them are like their their roster is so small, and also their roster is full of guys that are like could could conceivably be in running for like a heavyweight title shot. There's not a lot of like mid Carter guys. So I don't know. I don't know if, I don't know who they, who they have to face uh, EC3 rockstar spud. Like, okay, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, I'll, I'll mm-hmm. see who I'd like to see, um, EC3 in a feud with. I would love, I would have loved to see that when AJ left, Ethan Carter was just given the title. That could have been cool. And then he was given all of these jobber guys to squash and nothing. And, like, he defended it every week, but it was against, like, your Norfurnums, your Dewey Barneses, your Shark Boys, all that stuff. And he like Rocky, went Rocky on a really three. impressive, you know, quote-unquote, <laughs> yeah. streak of title defenses until AJ came back. So, yeah, I guess AJ Styles would be the one I'd like to see. All right. Uh, Number three. I often have those moments where I have an unpopular opinion about someone that is loved by many. What wrestlers, not named John Cena or Randy Orton, were you just never a big fan of, while your friends might think the world of? Mr. Anderson. (laughs) That's when I read this question, and I, I read this question, I immediately had my answer. Because I do not like Mr. Anderson. I made it very apparent, and a lot of people I know like him, and I don't get it. Like even his like WWE stuff, it's saying you like Mr. Anderson is like saying you like Carlito. Like what has Carlito done? <laughs> no, but Carlito, Carlito was flashes, kind of entertaining. Brilliant. Yeah, he had the cabana. Uh, he was he had a, a a drop down like ring announcer microphone, and that was it. None of his like actual promos to me were any bit memorable. Like I even like guys like who like Rock or Austin who had like catchphrases had parts of their promo that weren't catchphrases that were memorable. You know, I can't get, remember a single Mr. Kennedy promo. And I mentioned this before, and I think Tony on the Facebook group posted me like I was like, name a good Mr. Anderson match, because I cannot think of a really good Mr. Anderson match where I watched it and was like, that is a really amazing match. And he listed them. Two of his top three were Money in the Bank ladder matches that he was in, which involved seven other people and, like, a first blood match with The Undertaker. And it's like, (laughs) okay. Like, he's just not memorable, and I don't think – I think he had an interesting character, but he didn't do anything enough – didn't do enough with the character to make it interesting. He's and the appeal of him being in TNA is literally only people that are like, Mr. Kennedy, I know who Mr. Kennedy is. I think there and were flashes. Don't look I, at what they're watching. <laughs> I think there were flashes of brilliance with his is I thought his sense of humor was good when he did those promos in between WWE and TNA. Um and I just think I, I I again go back to I think the the assholes thing was a good thing for him. Unfortunately, there's never never any good evolution in TNA. Um, I would have liked I to think, see where he would be sorry. in WWE as Mr. Kennedy. Where would Mr. Kennedy have gone by this point? I He'd be the son of Vince McMahon. I, in this case, I just don't think you can blame TNA. I know yes, we're going to talk. No, I, mean, you can I know very that's well. the common thing to go to, but you can't blame TNA for Mr. Anderson not really being that interesting. I don't. I don't think I, I blame TNA. I, I blame him being in TNA. I blame his situation because if you don't flourish in WWE and evolve, you don't go anywhere. TNA, yeah. you don't have to evolve, right? In a long run, I mean. Really, who's who's had really striking growth in TNA? Especially the only people. person, the only person that has, yeah, Bubba Ray Dudley. Yeah, not true. Bubba Ray this. Dudley is the only person that is. I, really I, I'm, I'm with that. I'm with that. I'm the growth. guy, the Completely guy who plays Abyss, because he played another guy. Okay, okay, yeah, He's Abyss grown as a person. As far as like somebody that's TNA grown, 
I think Abyss is your most interesting okay. person. Yes. That is the guy with the most history of anybody in that company. Yeah. And, and I mean, remember when James has Mitchell developed was... into something like recently, but it's not good or interesting. Mm-hmm. It's just kind of like get, fucking get the hair out of your face. You piece yeah. Of shit. No, and, and, Stop and it. that happens. Uh, my thing, is, and, and go going back to like what I mentioned, like with Carlito. Say Carlito went to TNA instead of Mr. Anderson. I probably would be saying the same things because mm-hmm. the dude just does. It, it's someone that's just there, and the gimmick is interesting enough, but it just doesn't. Do anything. Yeah, you look. But good. the thing, the thing about them is, when you bring someone new into TNA, if they're a former WWE guy and like a relatively big star in WWE, they win the title right away. And then I don't. You win the but title, that's the thing. I don't. What think is it there has to anything do? to do with the booking and what opportunity or what you know storylines they put them in or anything? It's the fact that they're sort of going off of the fact that they have this character, but they're not being charismatic in the actual character. But if you don't have an ultimate goal... The character's cool, but he's not doing anything cool in the character. (laughs) But if you don't have a goal, like, in WWE, you you have guys who want to be the world champion. Like, guys who talk about it a lot. Guys who had a a brief run and got taken away from them. TNA, every one of their top stars is a multiple-time champion for the most part. Mm-hmm. And if going not back, multiple-time going like champion, what I said about their the reigns about were there, About how there's long. no mid-carders. Yeah, there's a big, there's a big gap there. So. Okay, someone, someone else answered the question. What's the one wrestler that you don't like that uh, everyone else does? You know, I saw this in the email, and I've honestly been thinking about it. I can't come up with anybody. You guys are just all way Nobody. too positive. Apparently Mr. Kennedy... Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. it, it is one. Well, um, shit, I look like an, an asshole. Can I just say, like, back in the day, WCW as a whole? Okay. <laughs> Actually, it, all depends, it all depends on when you started watching, I think. You when know, it was, um, it was still a thing. In, I just, I could not stand WCW. And, in, um, in the WCW really vein? Enjoyed. Chronic. What's that? Chronic. chronic. You're a fan of Chronic? Chronic's a good answer. I... I loved that tag team. And down with that. Uh, Bam, oh, you're doing Bam the opposite. Hero. Okay. Kind of, I kind, thought, of I, kind of big on Vampiro. I thought you were saying you hated Chronic, but everyone loved them. <laughs> Wait, which way are we going on this again? If, if oh. that you hate, it's a wrestler oh. that you hate, but every a majority of people like. Oh, okay. Oh, what? I misunderstood that. Okay. <laughs> we'll go with that too. Fuck it. I'm the only one that hates people. <laughs> I don't know. The Kennedy thing just threw me off so well. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, your Instagram threw me off. <laughs> well, you we like that? that? You like what's yeah, happening here? Like you like you like uh, this going on? <laughs> well, for a uh, while it was um, John Morrison for me, actually. Oh really? Yeah. Yeah, I I always thought Miz was the better. Like Morrison was clearly a better athlete, but his matches kind of bored me sometimes. I gotta say, I uh, also don't hate our truth. As much as everybody else seems to. Yeah, that's weird. <laughs> yeah, Thanks. moving on. Yeah, <laughs> you're an oddball, Sorg. Um, this is back to the email. For me, it's Wade Barrett. From Nexus to Core to anything this guy does, he just does not entertain me. He has yet to strike that emotional chord with me, and I don't miss him when he's gone or have a desire for him to be back anytime soon. Let me tell I you what. That. This is me speaking as Lunchbox. I've got some shit to say about Wade Barrett, but we'll save it for a little raw yes. up. That's it for me, guys. Great show last week, and I sympathize with you about the puns, Lunchbox. It is one of my pet peeves as well, along with eyebrows that need to be trimmed. <laughs> I'm looking at you, Eamon. Regards, Dustin. I'm a hairy male. Go fuck all the, yourself. All the grooming tips here Whoa. today. Wow. Um, I'm genetically hairy. Hey, I want to take a couple minutes uh, to touch on some of the social talking. So it's just like, I'm going to just fucking ignore that and yep, go we're on. We're going to move on. what I was talking about. You know, I was a little peeved and I, I, I struck up a good conversation apparently on Facebook yesterday. Uh, it was announced that uh, the, the WWE, okay, the last, I, I watched the documentary, did not watch any of the matches for uh, 50 years uh, of WWE. Uh, one mm. of the matches they included was the WrestleMania 3 Classic, Andre and Hogan, we all know it. Uh, but apparently, the majority of the match was done from the hard camp. Um, now, 
the reason for that, and this kind of peeves me off, uh, we see WWE definitely has a history of this. And, and Mike, as somebody that used to work there, maybe you have something uh, uh, about about that. Um, and I can't remember if you chimed in on this, uh, to be honest. Uh, but apparently there was a fellow... You, hold on, this is the rest of the story. Uh, there was a guy, basically, like, one of the uh, uh, employees, stagehands, uh, in, stagehands in the background, and uh, in recent in recent years, uh, uh, Phillips was his name was exposed as a pedophile who frequently took advantage of underage males he supervised during the ring setup at live events. Um, so, because Ooh. this guy is in the background at one of the biggest events of the year uh, of, of history, uh, they didn't use the side cameras because he's. I guess pretty prominently in the background. Um, so, I, and I'll touch on some of the comments here as we go. But I wanted to get your thoughts real quick. I only want to spend a couple minutes on this. Uh, what do you think of this mass editing of the WWE's doing? We've seen what they do with Chris Benoit. They 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 they, they edited a unedited Raw on the latest 20th anniversary collection, um, and plus everything they've done over the years, the horrible cover-ups for the old WWF scratch logo for years. Um, uh, what do you think of this latest one? Do you think they're justified in doing it? And why do you think they think... Why did this become an issue? Well, I... I, I... Going back to like the ones you mentioned about like the whole WWF logo is being blurred out and the Benoit stuff, I think those are very valid, um, both because of obviously the lawsuit that happened with the World Wildlife Fund. I mean, obviously that's just what's going to happen, and the Benoit stuff I think is I have no problem with nowadays. I have no problem with because it's like how I think CM Punk's meant like CM Punk was doing some con of sorts and someone asked him a question about it. And he's like, we you know don't want to give him attention. Because he did a horrible thing, mm-hmm. and it's like, yeah, that's true. Like, you shouldn't do that. Um, so I can understand that. In this case, I'm a little not so. I I not like angered about it or anything. But it's just to me, it's not like anything super major. To I don't where someone would see a guy in a crowd and either know that he was a um, convicted pedophile or that he like did you know or they would research it even like i think that's very minor um and i don't know if editing that match would have would, is a thing that you really need to do um and i think someone compared it to um and maybe not in this case but uh, someone compared it on the facebook group to like when uh, i think now when they have the hogan turn at bash at the beach uh, they cut out the part where Bobby Heenan says, well, what side is he on? Yeah, before he's kind of revealed himself coming down the aisle. And uh, I don't like that whatsoever because re- history is done for a reason. And the reason people look back at history and the reason people look back at certain matches and see how good they are is because of what happened. And to edit what happened, it almost creates sort of a false history. Mm-hmm. Um so I don't – I'm not a big fan of that kind of stuff. I don't know if it necessarily does that in this case because it's just like not filming a guy. But like I don't know. I, I think they – I think it's a case where people need to pick their battles. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, um, the Bobby Heenan thing, I didn't – I actually didn't know about that. And that just seems like nitpicking to me. Like who's going to notice? And even mm-hmm. even this editing the guy out of this match – I'm con- like I'm confused. Did they do it of their own volition, or was there some like fucking mothers group, or 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 like you know, mm-hmm. uh, just some fucking group putting pressure on them to edit that out? If that's the case, then I sort of understand it a bit more. Um, but if it's just of their own volition, then I don't. It just seems very pointless, to be perfectly honest. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense, and and the fact that. Uh, like Vince McMahon, I don't, I don't know what other company in the world does this. You know? Yeah, yeah. Now, now it is there is like a whole thing of check out the article that we have linked here. I'll try to retweet it here too. Um, there was it, this was like kind of a bigger scandal kind of situation too. Uh, according to WrestleZone here, Tom Cole, who worked for WWE in ring attendant, as a ring attendant from the '80s and '90s, when he was underage through young adulthood, hurled charges against his former employer that resulted in a resignation of three longtime employees and helped fuel a sex scandal that plagued the company for years which I've never heard about. 
Um, mm. This went public in like 1992, uh, where that Terry Garvin attempt is something. It was in an autobiography for Bret Hart. Hmm. Um, so it's been a publicly known thing. Yeah, for yeah, time. yeah. It just seems like why like did that. this come up? Like, what is my WrestleMania collection the same way? I don't think it is. No. Um, it, it, why? Why did this happen now for this edition? Um, yeah, yeah. Oh, I, I mean, someone said in the chat room that it might be kind of a backlash of what happened at Penn State. Yeah, yeah. That, that, that and was I think it could just be like when they released the WrestleMania collection, that was back in like 2004. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it wasn't as in the forefront of people's minds yeah. back then. And so. everyone's getting so like overly political correct, I think, sometimes. Yeah. That they're probably just doing it as a just in case. Yeah. Because it doesn't really affect the storytelling of the match at all. I mean, it's Hogan Andre. As long as you see the slam, we don't really give a fuck what happens with the rest <laughs> of the match. I guess that's right. It wasn't that great of a match, right? Um, <laughs> what did it? What? Who? What did they ever do? <laughs> who, did they, who did they ever beat? Um, <laughs> all right. With that, hey, I want to touch base with you guys. Of course, we got something really big going on. If you go over to, I'm on my Facebooky face thing i go over to wrestling mayhem show i drop down into uh the events and we got something pretty cool coming up here where's the events why is it hidden uh we got a great wms fan appreciation night coming out and coming up here in the pittsburgh area we'll be filming our 400th episode here in two weeks uh and also we'll be showing the great no holds barred uh, with our friends here, DJ Lunchbox and Bobby F. J. Town are going to be doing commentary over that. It's going to be a fun night. It was free. Just please uh, donate or uh, uh, attend the concession stand by our friends at the Hollywood Theater. They are a nonprofit and uh, they are trying to raise money for uh, a digital projector. Uh, so go on down, help support a local cause and uh, support. Uh, just show just showing our appreciation let's go see this movie on the big screen because i know i was very very young when i had the opportunity to do that and and guys like Heyman haven't <laughs> so it's for the rest of you <laughs> well then <laughs> you were a fetus you so and so yes yeah, so so no but it, it, it's great it's, it's over in dormont uh just up the road from where we're at here in the south hills uh it's right off of the t-line if you need a ride down there uh so come on down uh hop onto the facebook page again again we're going to tweet it out here so you guys can all see that uh and click the link and and uh and let us know you're coming you know and any questions any comments any concerns please uh please Please let us know. Let us know in there. Uh, and it's going to be fun. And uh, we'll have that show up in a couple days afterwards there. Um, and of course, next week is going to be our Christmas episodes. For I think I think everything is going to do a Christmas episode next week. Uh, and then so we won't be doing a live stream the week after that. Typically, we're on break by then anyways. So we'll really be missing much. And then we'll be doing something extra special and uh, releasing that here. Uh, before Christmas, of course. So, yep, yep. with that, let's and head over. And sometime before, and and sometime before Christmas, there will be a live stream of Light Kick TKO and myself doing commentary for the Mrs. Movie Christmas Bounty. Exactly. And Merry Christmas, Mayhem Universe. So go check that out. Now, with that, <laughs> let's go to the Indie Minute. Indie Minute for this week. It's time to talk about the world of independent professional wrestling. There are a good series of shows coming up this weekend. Uh, if you are an independent wrestling fan from anywhere, you can check that out. Well, mainly America. There's stuff everywhere, but I'm just talking about America. Fuck you, America. America. Fuck communism. Um, uh, so the first thing I want to talk about Fuck communist wrestling. The- yeah. Yeah. Totally. Um, the first company that I want to talk about has a big event. Uh, one of their biggest events coming up this weekend, Friday, December 6th, St. Louis Anarchy, our good friends over there, are presenting Yuletide Terror. Uh, it's going to be at the Knight- Knights of Columbus in Alton, Illinois, on December 6th. Uh, it looks like a really stacked uh, event. Uh, a couple friends of the show. Uh, the new St. Louis Anarchy champion, Gary J., a friend of the Wrestling Mayhem show, he's defending his championship in a two-out-of-three falls match against Matt Fitchett, which should be an amazing contest. Um, also, uh, the final match in the Best of Three series, 
series between ACH and Davey Vega. Uh, Kyle O'Reilly, Ring of Honor star, takes on friend of the show Johnny Gargano in what should be a phenomenal match. Uh, a lot of great talent on that show. Uh, St. Louis Anarchy is bringing some of the best professional wrestling in the Midwest area currently. Uh, they're doing a lot of great stuff, and they have really a stacked card and, and a lot of amazing talent. Um, from all over. So uh, if you want to go check them out, uh, their website is slawrestling.com. Uh, go to Facebook, uh, SLA Wrestling, uh, and you can get more information on an event and where you can get tickets uh, this Friday uh, at the Knights of Columbus in Alton, Illinois. Um, but also, if you are in the Illinois area, there's plenty of wrestling for you this weekend because the next night you can actually, if you're in the Illinois area, uh, if you're near LaSalle, Illinois, you can go to Dreamwave Wrestling. They are holding an event, The Fight Before Christmas, uh, at their Knights of Columbus in LaSalle, Illinois, Saturday, December 7th. A lot of big matches on that card, uh, making his return to the independent wrestling scene and uh, facing a lot of different people. Chris Hero will be taking on Prince Mustafa Ali, uh, Christian Rose versus Shane Hollister. Uh, Marche Rocket against Reed Bentley, and special guest Gangrel. So if you want to see Gangrel, if you want to see Chris Hero and a bunch of young up-and-coming Midwest stars, uh, go to DreamWaveWrestling.com and go uh, get tickets for their event, The Fight Before Christmas, Saturday, December 7th. So Midwest, Midwest wrestling fans have a lot to look forward to this weekend. Uh, also, for our fans that are in the PA area, which I know there's a lot of you, especially near the Pittsburgh area, I know Pro Wrestling Express is having an event this weekend, Friday, December 6th, at the PW. UX Wrestleplex, uh, their do or die event. Um, uh, in attendance for that event will be uh, former WWE uh, star, the million dollar man, Ted DiBiase. Uh, Scotty Gash will be taking on Matthew Justice, a friend of the show. Uh, there's also a four way heavyweight title match featuring another friend of the show, Gory. Uh, as well as a bunch of other stuff. It uh, looks like a very interesting card. If you want information and tickets for that event, you can go to uh, prowrestlingexpress.com. Uh, go check them out if you're in the McKeesport, PA area. Uh, so go check us out. Go support. Go check them out. Go support some friends of the show. Um, and the final event, if you're not in the Midwest, if you're not in the PA area, but you're in California, there's an interesting event going on uh, at the American Legion Post number 46 in Culver City, California, for Wrestling Cares. Uh, this is an actually a very interesting promotion because um, they're, a, they're a promotion based out of California, and uh, 25% of the proceeds from all their events go to local charities. Um, so it's a you know you can if you want to see good wrestling and support a great cause, the show Saturday, December 7th on that card. We have Johnny Gargano, friend of the Wrestling Mayhem Show, Adam Cole, uh, Ring of Honor and PWG champion, uh, former New Japan uh, Junior Heavyweight Tag Team Champions, Forever Hooligans, uh, and tons of more talent. And uh, like I mentioned, 25% of the proceeds for that event will benefit the Wildlife Way Station, uh, which is a the Southern California's only nonprofit wildlife preserve. So if you love the wildlife and you love uh, local um fundraising groups in california go to wrestling cares if you want information and tickets you can go to wrestlingcares.com and go support them uh and go support any form of indie wrestling uh that you can find this weekend because there's got to be something out there for everyone uh and that my friends is the indie mm-hmm. minute for this mm-hmm. week mm-hmm. 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 nope mm-hmm. nope mm-hmm. nope nope uh no there's also one going on this saturday in west newton uh oh oh that one too (laughs) rwalive.com a big match going up Lodi of wcw sign guy fame taking on ryan edmonds in a steel cage i quit career match for the title Hmm, very interesting. So, and actually, there's a video feature on rwalive.com, the first package video put together by uh, the former Mayhemer, Chachi. Uh, so you can go check that out uh, over there, rwalive.com. It's going to be down West Dune. Of course, the DVD will be available here on uh, sorgatronmedia.com slash store. Uh, so go check that out. Our friends there, if you're in West Newton, around the area. And also, we've been tweeting. If you haven't already, go look at the uh, At Mayhem Show Twitter. And uh, we've been uh, uh, tweeting, retweet uh, our, our tweet to win. 
I mean, is it a better way to say that? Uh, so we'll be giving away two tickets to the show like we've done before uh, to give uh, people in the Pittsburgh area or south of Pittsburgh, uh, you know, a chance to uh, go see some wrestling, a really good show. And we'll be doing the same thing for IWC next week. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Join our Twitter, retweet that, and uh, we'll be randomly picking somebody that's retweeted uh, for that. Uh, and that, Eamon, is the Indie Minute for this week. Yes, it is. Yes, it hey. is. Uh, you can find out more information. Uh, hey, we got an app, iOS, we Amazon do. Store, Android, um, that uh, you can get all your episodes of the Wrestling Mayhem Show. Bonus content. We had a lot of fun going through the uh, uh, file folder of images that DJ Lunchbox had uh, here before the show. Um, <laughs> also, quick access to all your connections with the show, including Twitter, Facebook, and uh, that phone number and email address. So if you're drunk, dial and just look for the Wrestling Mayhem Show app, pull that up, hit the contact, and you're already dialing that phone number before you even know it. Give us a call and let us know what you think, what's on your mind, why, what do you hate about Eamon's facial features tonight? Uh, all that more. kind of I'll, stuff. I'll, I'll read them and I'll cry myself to sleep. <laughs> oh, they're voicemail, so I guess you will read them because we do get text transcriptions of those. So please. I'll, I'll, I'll pretend that they say nice things. <laughs> exactly. You say thank you to everything. And with that. Eamon, they're all just constructive criticism on how you look and things you cannot change without exactly. expensive plastic surgery. Problems change. people have with the way you were born. It happens. Eamon, you need to comb your dick. <laughs> well, here's a little you need preview. to make your bed. Here's a little preview and a, a little snippet of uh, what, what's up uh, from the latest IWC Combat in Clearfield. And we'll be back with Remember When. No. Why did I, oh, no. I look serious. <laughs> I bet you, you don't have Yeah, but I was the only one not going like, like why I'm going to beat game. a motherfucker. <laughs> It was, he said happy Bobby Day. Happy Bobby Day. Yay, Chris Bobby Bobby Day. In the middle when he was trying to get ready for walk, or Talking Dead, too. <laughs> Sword looks like an Eskimo. Not for 400, Damon? Sure, why not? Come on, man. Come on, family. man. Come on, man. Matt Carlin's wants you to. Like the day. first time the sun rose, I pay the reef, I thumb up up in the one chose. Before the day break, I see the orange glow. With the arms, I am ready for one more show. And as the day breaks, I try to save face. This is beautiful, now we're nowhere to place me. I've been lost for years, but it makes sense now. My man is liberty, rarely feel I'm let down. Rose in the concrete, like my whole life. Finally let go, no need to hold tight. We're gonna cloud the sky, I can see clear. I can lie, man, I'm just happy to be here. Be here. What's up, guys? DJ Lunchbox here. We are back back oh my goodness welcome back to the wrestling mayhem show it's gonna be all right it's gonna be all right we're at the halfway point and it's that magical time when we take a little trip down memory lane that we like to call remember when <gasps> I never remember when I'm gonna remember again and I'm not gonna remember then. Gonna remember when. <clears throat> so, uh, this week um, has been a—it's been a great week for podcasts. Uh, there's been a lot of great ones, including ours, specifically ours. The best is ours, um, but there's been some other good ones too, uh, namely Nerdist which everybody listens to and you can listen to over at Nerdist.com, hosted by the one Chris Hardwick, who hosts every single show except for this one. Um, and his get, one of his guests this week was the one and only Chris Jericho. Now, I had a hard day at work, okay? It kind of sucked. And when I got home, I did a little rage cleaning. I cleaned my entire house. And what did I do? I listened to that episode of The Nerdist, and it reminded me just how awesome Chris Jericho is. So on this week's Remember When, we are going to talk about the Ayatollah of Rock and Roll, Christopher Jericho. That's right, folks, our, the, the very best of Chris Jericho, and I'm going to kick things off by telling you about a time when Chris Jericho reinvented himself. He, uh, he had been around, long hair. Top knot sometimes, left for a while, came back, spangly vest, short hair, still in awesome shape, left again, came back, and Chris Jericho at that point 
was uh, my favorite incarnation of Chris Jericho. He talked softly. He had a hair horn. He was in a suit. And I believe that was the time when he was feuding with uh, Shawn Michaels and mm-hmm. accidentally punched Shawn Michaels' wife right in the mouth. That <laughs> is my personal favorite Chris Jericho era, is uh, suit and tie, uh, aggressive heel Chris Jericho. Uh, Sorgatron, what do you think? Damn it, that was mine too. That was <laughs> mine too. You know, I, 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 but I'll, I'll, I'll add to it though. Um, remember how that started where he was, um, it was one of the Save Us Jericho deals. Um, and he was sort of befriending Michaels, and then uh, and then there was an awkward point, and he faded into this. There's actually I listen to most of that podcast today too, and they're talking about reinvention, and he talked about how he apparently had left and taken on some some acting classes, and and was inspired by was a country for old men, well, con- uh, no country for old men, mm-hmm. uh, no country and, for and old that men. soft speaking, oh, yeah, yeah, right, and right. saying the big words, and 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 seeing if like. Like he didn't know if people were just you know what is he saying you know it, 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 but it really kind of sucked us in and I know for us we we're just like we, we loved it we ate it up the entire time uh, and uh, yeah that was definitely like, out of all the years um, you know from Lionheart Chris Jericho on like that's that was great it was the biggest departure from what he had done so awesome and it's better than uh, than but I'm Chris Jericho. Definitely, <laughs> definitely, yeah. Amen. Amen. Okay. Uh, uh, I got a good one. Uh, one of my, I started watching wrestling around 2002, um, and uh, that means my first wrestle, uh, my first ever WrestleMania was WrestleMania 19, and there was an awesome Chris Jericho match on WrestleMania 19 featuring him against Shawn Michaels. Um, that was a. I watch it back sometimes. And it's really, it's a really spectacular match. And as much as Jericho, Jericho was actually. I mean, he was charismatic, and that's one of the things that made him one of the best. But he was also. I mean, he was in that era of one of those first guys that was more. I guess, and for lack of a better term, considered one of the work rate guys um, that could bust out matches like this. Um, and uh, yeah, he was. It was a. It's a really phenomenal match, and it's what one of the things that really got me into Chris Jericho in the beginning, and and showcased like how good he can be, um, because the, he has. I mean, and he's had amazing stuff with Michaels after that too, and like Will and not Will Lunchbox, Lunchbox and Sorg mentioned before. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, that's my personal favorite, Mad Mike. Wow, I'm shocked. That on the eve and a half of possibly getting a new undisputed champion, none of you mentioned the night that Chris Jericho defeated The Rock and Stone Cold on the same night to become the first undisputed champion. Because that, to me, was amazing. It's, It's a career accolade that, I mean, if you watch the matches back, they're not good. Like they're full of run-ins, they're full of bullshit that we complain about every week. But the fact that he, like, you had four guys in there. You had Rock, Austin, Angle, and Jericho. And if you put on like a betting scale of who was going to end up as the sole champion, Chris Jericho was the long shot. He had to be like hundred to one odds easily, and he came out as the winner, and that was amazing. What about you, Bobby? Hi, Bobby. Sorry. <laughs> I was <laughs> muted. I didn't know Bobby it was back. Didn't have an answer. <laughs> <laughs> um my my favorite all time Jericho moment is when he de- when he de- when he debuted. Mm-hmm. Came out with the rock, went toe to toe with the rock when the rock was pretty much untouchable as far as like uh, mic skills. Yeah. Um and just I thought he did a great job, and and it, it was great to see him in WWE when we've seen him in WCW before. So, and that's why he's my favorite wrestler. So, all right, yeah. <laughs> Awkward. Uh, we have we have some good ones from the chat room. Who, who else? Riz. Oh, Riz. 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 Back. Riz. 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 God here? damn it! Somebody fucking toss it. Riz, no, what was here? your favorite chair? Like, I just saw my face come up. I didn't know what to do. Like, it's my big <laughs> head. Um, but if we're talking about Chris Jericho, 
Two words. Sparkly jacket. <laughs> yes. That's it. It keeps him safe Sparkles. when he's jogging at night. It lights up, and it's awesome. Tell me that's not one of the best entrances you see. The lights <laughs> turn down, and all you see are the jacket. Is the jacket. <laughs> uh, from the chat room, uh, Jessica Legkick TKO says her pick is Ralphus Security Systems International. I forgot... I forgot Ralphus. Everything about Ralphus is gold. Ralphus and the uh, Jerichoholic Ninja. Yes. And uh, Tony Garza had two. One being Jericho, the team with Chris Jericho and Big Show, which was fantastic. And um, also move number 147, <laughs> arm bar. <laughs> And also, Riz, you are wrong. The two words regarding Jericho, ask him. Yeah. Well, uh, hey, I, go, hey I'm back. Uh, that's it for this week. Oh, sorry, so remember sorry, when. Gone. <laughs> <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> um, Sorg also was Sorg, Sorg was listening <laughs> off Chris Jericho's 1004 moves. Arm bar. All right. Uh, <laughs> with that, hey, you know, Mike, you you are partaking currently in our wares uh, uh, with that T-shirt there. Why don't you tell us a little bit about ProWrestlingTees.com and, and that process uh, and how you got such a fine shirt by one Alex Cars? Sorg, I would be happy to. ProWrestlingTees.com. Now, now, you know we talk a lot about independent people. We talk about Cole Cabana. We talk about Goldust on occasion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there are a lot of other indie wrestlers that have tees on ProWrestlingTees.com. But, this is very important, you need to bypass all of those other people and get our shirts first. Because our shirts are amazing. I, I, I honestly, I would have plug Colt Cabana's first, but after I put this on, it feels like I'm wrapped in a velvet embrace from DJ Lunchbox. And that is something money can't buy, people. Something money cannot buy. No, money can buy Except when it. you buy it. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say that, that you can give him a buck oh five behind the dumpster. I know. <laughs> yeah. But well, if you do yeah. want to, my feel... day job doesn't pay me much, so uh, <laughs> it can be bought. If you Lunch if you want to, custom buck oh five. If you want to get uh, be part of that, uh, uh, feel that embrace. You can go to prowrestlingtees dot com slash wms. Check out stuff like the property of wms mayhem shirt, uh, just like Mad Mike is wearing right there. Uh, pull it up. There it is. There it is. Nice. Uh, and of course, you yeah. will be seeing this at a TNA pay per view, probably airing in July. Which means you probably won't see it because it's a TNA pay per view. Yes, yes. <laughs> uh, I will actually buy it to see if I'm on there. There you go. There you go. Um, so go progressingtees.com. Support the Mayhem Show. Uh, buy a T-shirt. Wear that stuff. Let people know where you got it. And support all the rest of the indie wrestlers on there as well. And check out their merch. Including friends of the shows like a, you know, like Zima Ion and, and, and the tons of other people in there as well. Uh, Johnny Gargano so is part of this. Yes. That's DJ, that's DJ Zima Ion. DJ Zima Ion. I can't. He has too many names. Um and with that, let's get into uh, some discussion here, guys. Uh, we had a couple things lined up, I believe. Bad news, Barrett. Bad, Bad news, news Barrett. Barrett. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah. God damn it. I was so angry at that. That's the stupidest shit I've ever fucking seen. Thank you. God damn Thank it. It's so you. fucking stupid. Bad news, Barrett. And he comes out and he says, oh, good news bad news that's a fucking animaniac skit that's <laughs> not a yeah, fucking yeah, wrestler yeah. gimmick i am done i am done I, with I, I wade literally barrett thought I was the wow only person that didn't like that gimmick and it's good I to know that lunchbox is with me fuck you bobby <laughs> fuck <laughs> you what's well, from the jbl and cool show i don't care all right well tell me wait, 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 wait. Oh, tell me did it come off better on the jbl and cool show yes i've never Oh, I've never seen it. You've never seen it. <laughs> no, no. It 
It did come up. So don't tell me, oh, Cole bad news show. there, and it's from JVO and Cole's show. What is? All right. I'm stating facts. Okay. Mike, Mike, you said you've seen it? it. It did. It does come off better on the JBL, JBL and Cole show because it's kind of like a bit. Yeah. Like not where he's standing in the middle of the ring or the middle of the arena behind a fucking podium. It's just like um, Zack Ryder was walking around backstage and he saw Mr. Belding wearing a Dolph Ziggler shirt or something. Or it, was, it was something to do with that. And then um, Wade Barrett just pops in and says, Looks like you just lost your number one broski. And then, boom, bad news, Barrett. And then he just popped out. Okay. From, from what I can tell, that's a it's segment, not a gimmick. It shouldn't <laughs> be happening. You would make a yeah, gimmick yeah. out of it. It, it shouldn't Fucking be happening blows. out in the middle of the arena. It sucks ass. If, he, if it's a skit and he pitched that skit on Saturday Night Live, <laughs> Lauren Michaels would have him killed. Fuck bad news, Barry. Uh, you know what? That is Lord lazy. Michael's and that's the big bullshit. thing is that he does. Dude, he'll do this, and even if the segments are good, like he's just gonna wrestle and be Wade Barrett. Like, like his wrestling's not gonna change. No, How, but you know. So, like, what's the fucking point? What's wrong with Wade Barrett's wrestling? It blows. No, 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 Bobby. Not as long as Wade Barrett's wrestling. I don't mind Wade Bear. I think I want Wade Bear to succeed so bad, but he's just not. It's I like what too. Dustin said in the email. This he's is not, not the way to make it happen. Was Wade Bear is going before? to be the come, become the new Mr. Anderson and Carlito. Hey, where he's the guy that <laughs> was face. there in WWE, mm-hmm. and he was there, so he's got that recognition. So he just appears on TNA and fucking indie shows as you know a draw. Yeah, but if he appears on indie shows, then you'll love him. No, that no, <laughs> dude, no. Trust me, no. <laughs> Not everyone that appears on an indie show I love. Uh, I, I can't wait to see in three years Eamon's commenting on a Wade Barrett match and, insp- and inspire. Oh, trust me, that's <laughs> not happening. <laughs> you sure about that? I, I'm, so, I'm fairly confident that is not happening. <laughs> But hey, um, you, you never know. You never know. Anyways, Wade Barrett's gimmick is dumb. It's dumb. <laughs> All right. Um, what about TLC? How's it shaping up? Other than the handicap show of the year, what the hell? I'm interested. Yawn. Why? Handicap matches should be for Raws and Raws only. I know, right? Yep. And, and even that's been overdone. We had a handicap a loser on Raw a few weeks ago. Do we really need our papers? There's got to like be more to this. Handicap <laughs> with as, with as yeah, many I, handicap I, I matches as think... we've had this year, I'm surprised Zach Gowan is in the face of the WWE. Oh. Yeah. Uh, yes. <laughs> but no, I, I don't. I don't. I don't hate it. Like, I think the matches are going to be really good. And yeah, people can be like, yo, oh yeah, the wrestling's good, but whatever. Like, the matches are dumb. But the wrestling's going to be really good. Uh, yeah, all yeah, yeah. Right, the handicap but, uh, matches and John Cena, Randy Orton. I think the wrestling is going to be very good. At some point, there has to be a fucking story. I guess this that. An ROH. Who says they're not going to do a story with it? There's going to be a story. I, 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 there's going to be some story. There, there's going to be something to it. There's going to be stuff with Daniel Bryan. Not what happened when he got taken away? Have a handicap Stuff's going to happen. Although I do feel like they're going to have a handicap match just to have a handicap match, unfortunately. Um, no, but this isn't WWE handicap match. Why is it you know, a gimmick that they the have to do? They're doing it for a reason. It's not a gimmick because it's a pay-per-view. Like, they're not obligated to do it, so they're obviously doing it for some reason. Like, what? You know what I mean? No, I don't. No, like when they do Hell in I the don't Cell, they, a lot of times they don't do Hell in the Cells for reasons. They do it because Hell in the Cell is a pay-per-view, and they're doing a Hell in the Cell match. So you have to create a reason to have the Hell in the Cell match. Yeah, you have to create a reason, but you have to create a reason in time for the Hell in the Cell match to happen. So you just find a reason. reason. The they don't have. They, 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 they weren't you obligated to make these handicap matches. You're not making any sense. You're talking yourself. <laughs> they circles. decided. They decided to make these handicap matches when they didn't have to. <laughs> no. So they must be making them handicap maybe, matches you know, maybe for a reason. No, he's maybe right. I'm no, he's right. I can't understand what you're saying. He's right. He's right though, because. They're not. Re- they're not okay. They got their TLC match out of, out of the way. They can do regular matches on the card. So why did we decide to do a handicap match for these? They're going to rename the pay per view tables, ladders, and wheelchairs. 
because it's handicap matches. I'm Bobby points. Points, Bobby. Points, Bobby. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. No, they, they, but yeah, they, no. There's there's some fucking it, reason they're doing this, and yeah. I'm just gonna wait to see what that reason is because it's gonna be great wrestling, as opposed to Survivor Series where we had matches for reasons, and a lot of them were not that great. Okay, okay, sure, sure. Um, either way, the, we're this, disagree. This is all just buying time for us. <laughs> I disagree. Randy Big Show was terrible. I disagree. Randy One Big Show was terrible, and that had. So much storyline behind it. True, it's true. But it did. I liked all the yes, other but it had a even though I was intoxicated when I was watching. It yeah. So, Eamon, can you tell me why CM Punk is feuding with the Shield again? CM Punk is feuding with the Shield for this. Well, one for the fact that he attacked him on Raw, but also from the fact that CM Punk believes that the Authority sick the Shield on CM Punk because of the negative words that CM Punk has said about the Authority. It's a simple and can story. You- and can you explain to me why he's not upset that the Wyatt family kidnapped his tag team partner? I don't know. I'm not to saying. Be fair, that to to be fair, they left him in the parking lot. Because they aren't. But there's a motive as to why the match is happening. So oh, much We're getting yelling. into dangerous territory again. We're, we're, it's an old game that we play here on the Wrestling Mayhem Show. It's a where we end up trying game. to look for logic in uh, – in, you know, WWE storylines. Pro wrestling. If TNA is more trap, logical. If you want the logic, WWE. you should watch Total Divas, obviously. No, no. Uh, Total Divas has less logic than anything in wrestling. That is true. Because everyone hates everyone on Total Divas, and then they come on Raw and they're immediately friends. How is that logic? Well, you've never seen a reality show before, huh? Yeah. <laughs> no. You've never even seen in, like, the, every even goddamn in, like, reality show that's ever happened. Like stuff. You've never like, interacted fucking... with women before, Eamon. They're always mean to each other behind each other's backs, and when they're in public, they're best friends. Oh, but they're not like wrestling Whoa, partners that, and like, right, that working got sexist. in tag teams. And, like... <laughs> I was joking. Ugh, fucking sure. Total Divas. I hate you so much. I hate Total Divas now, by the way. <laughs> yeah, I think everybody does. Yeah, they yeah, I haven't, I haven't watched like three episodes, and I'm not really missing it. Hey, at least I didn't turn off this week's episode like I did last week. Good. It was a little better. Good. I just want to, I just want Bill Demont to be an asshole and beat the shit out of a douchey dude. Why can't that happen? Why can't Bill, Bill Demont be the asshole that he legitimately is? <laughs> because he's it's... working in the WWE Performance Center now, and he didn't want to kill the guy. Oh, because he's <laughs> on the E Network. That too. <laughs> if he was on the USA network, like tough enough, then that shit would have went down. But he's not. No, nope. you, you see pe- people be beating other extra. people up all the time on reality shows. Phil all right. Still, still so still next week we have the Slammies, and this is oh, a real... Can we talk about how good TNA was last week? The what? what? No. 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 What? Yes. What? Whoa, 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 whoa. First up. of all, are you the, the are you the only one that watched it? Maybe. Maybe probably. We can't talk about it if you're the only one that watched it. Okay. Well, okay. Let's let if, let's uh, since you are the only one who has, uh, let yes. let's let you make the case for it. Okay. Okay. So let us. What All did right. we miss while we were too busy eating turkey? I know you DVR'd it and, and everything, but uh, oh, I, I I ate this once once I was well out of my turkey coma. Okay. So so um, what, what was so great about this? First of all, I know Amen is going to disagree. The funeral segment. The funeral segment was fantastic. It was the best thing TNA has done with Aces and Eights okay. since the reveal of Wes Briscoe being in a cage of Kurt Angle. Um, Mr. Anderson was actually funny, as opposed to the funny he's been on TNA. Yeah, 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 I know Eamon. you switched right to me, sorry. I know it already. Because I'm seeing the face you're making. <laughs> yeah, Eamon. Okay, I'm sorry. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let, let Mike finish. Go, go, finish, finish, Mike. I'm sorry. Okay. And Samoa Joe did the best thing he's done since 2006. And I'm not joking at all. When they were celebrating, Samoa Joe had a six pack of beer. And. He went to hand one to Mike Tanay, who was also hilarious. He went, he had one to Eric Young, to Magnus, and um, he Don't went put to that hand. 
show from that up, Sorg. <laughs> what? I, I wanted to make a visual representation of TNA that won't get us That is from not YouTube. visual representation. Let him finish before I explode. What's wrong with this? <laughs> <laughs> First of all, Ric Flair's note. No, no, no it's Mike's time. Mike's time. Mike's time. <laughs> but then Samoa Joe goes to hand a beer to Kurt Angle, and he says, ah, I better not. <laughs> it was the best thing I've seen Joe do since he was actually killing people. And then TNA, they brought back the turkey suit, which in and of itself would have been great. But you have DJ Zima Ion with the bromance. I've seen pictures of this. I, I got to watch the segment. You have to watch it. It's fantastic. I think this is going to be my favorite thing in TNA for a long time. Yes, it absolutely. It, the, the, the turkey match had almost all of my favorite TNA things in one segment. Reverse Battle had, Royal? Hmm? Reverse Battle Royal? Oh, no. <laughs> that is that is one of my favorite things, though. Yeah. But it had the bromance with DJ Zima Ion versus... Nor Furman and Dewey Barnes with Eric Young ODB around with the turkey suits. And Norv and Dewey lost and put the turkey suits on. Eric, um, Robbie E. did the chicken dance from Arrested Development, which was fantastic. I don't think he's ever seen a chicken before. <laughs> And then, at the end of the night, they had a Thanksgiving dinner full of heels. Yeah. And, it, and it, was, it was tremendous. It was, it was – the, any TNA show that ends with Nora Furman and Dewey Barnes in turkey suits giving a double splash off the top rope, that TNA show is going to be a win for me. Awesome. Now, aim in your rebuttal. Okay, first of all, I will say Nora Furnham and Dewey Barnes cannot do any wrong, so I will give you that. Um, no, that segment was not funny. It was not funny. And even, like, not just my Mr. Anderson stuff, who Mr. Anderson you was hate, not funny, in my you opinion. You hated it because of Mr. Anderson. Shut up. Shut up, Riz. Eric Young wasn't even, wasn't even funny in that. <laughs> exactly. Eric Young wasn't even funny in that, and I love Eric Young. And I hated being, I hated, like, just not laughing at anything because he Because he was with and Mr. And no... And no, Samoa Joe and Kurt Angle were not funny in that segment because there's nothing funny of Samoa Joe who notoriously gets shit on the internet for his weight problems just coming up and being like, hey, guys, nom, 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 am I right? Like that's not funny. Like, no, I know, that's like, why I laugh. It. We get it. Fat. You read our tweets about how we think you're super fat and out of shape. Like, that's he looks not like a joke. Samoa and Jim Belushi. It's not that's why joke. I laugh because he was doing that. John Belushi. It's, it's, he's doing it in a way. John, to John Belushi. Like sort of, I, I, They're both fat. I actually bad. like humor and jokes, and that wasn't there. I'm sorry. I did not think that segment was funny whatsoever. And, By the way, I, know, I'd also like to point out this is the second time Bully Ray has had a funeral in TNA. What was the first one? I'm upset that you didn't start Team your rebuttal 3D. with uh, Mad Mike, you ignorant slut. <laughs> He's too young for that reference. All right, I know, all right. I feel like it's a huge missed opportunity, though. If we're going to talk about TNA, I want to talk about the part of TNA that is the best thing they've done in the last three years, and that's obviously the TNA Impact no, let's video. No, let's talk about that. Is that Dolph Ziggler? What are you talking about? Free prize. Let's do it in a couple, couple of years. Let's do it. They signed Dolph Ziggler. Who? Who free, are these people prize. in this picture? Two thousand. 14, Bobby. All right. Okay, the one the one is um the guy who right. played Raiden in the Mortal Kombat a, movies. <laughs> I think it, I think I see Kevin Nash. Kevin Nash. Is that Kevin Nash? No, that's, that's Kevin Raiden Nash. In Mortal Kombat. No, that is that's um, Kevin Nash. Mr. That's Lebowski. Jeff Jarrett, and that is the, just a generic freaking dude <laughs> who they claim is Ric Flair. Yep. Very angry rock. <laughs> and bottom, I see. Uh, Isn't that Sonny Rico there? <laughs> That's Sonny Siaki Sorg. I think you've been lying to us. It actually looks like slightly that. out of shape, Bob Holly. <laughs> slightly out of shape. What is wrong with his arm? 
<laughs> this is a dollar ninety nine for that. Thanksgiving weekend. Kevin Nash is like, I'm so pretty. <laughs> No, that was CM Punk. Punk. Yeah, that was CM Punk this week. It was CM Punk. So, Sorg, we're going to talk about the thing we discussed in the Hangout. How much is it, Sorg? Hey, they signed Ezekiel Jackson, too. It it was $1.99 over the weekend. I I think it still is. We have to double check. Uh, Let me tell you what's a better use of your $1.99, and that's the the Wrestling Mayhem show app. I almost said the WWE app. No, that's free. (laughs) That's free. That's free and garbage. And still (laughs) not worth $1.99. For just just $1.99, you can get exclusive access to behind-the-scenes content. Uh, called Wrestling Mayhem Show Gold. Yeah, we already did this part, right? You know we already did this. Fuck you, we're doing uh, it again. You can, you can email us. We were that. tying it in to the show. Um, wow. Tie in. Segue. He was tying it in. Wow. Buzz uh, marketing. With that. <laughs> no, okay, so well, I was trying to get... Brings us to our end of minute. The Slammy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's read some email. The Slammy. The Slammies are <laughs> next week. Um... <laughs> No, that's the thing I actually want to talk about. Guys, I got an email here. For, hey, guys, can we put this on gold? I think we just remixed the we show. We just cycled through the entire, like, I guess, we just did a sliders on Whoa! the show. Um, Jesus. And now oh, Chad the Shad baby. with our fan of the week. <laughs> and now we're going to take you to a music break that's going to pull us from YouTube in five years. <laughs> I've got something from my Oda. <laughs> Damn it, Jessica, get out of the freezer! Pod safe music. Mm-hmm. What's that about mm-hmm. retard steam machine? All right, next, let's move on. <laughs> Slammies are next Slammies. week. Slammies! Uh, just got re- called an asshole by a midget. <laughs> Sorg, start the show. Slammy, All right. Slammy, slammy, slammy. <laughs> oh my God. Okay, and now it's time for the boss battle. It's been so oh, yeah. many Tuesdays. <laughs> it's been so many Tuesdays. Sorg, Sorg, what awesome thing do you have this week? <laughs> no, it's the wrong show entirely. <laughs> slammy, Sorg, what have you been playing please, and how slammy, are you doing? Please, for the love of Christ, Slammy. You guys, I saw Frozen this week and it was fantastic. <laughs> match of the year. What do you think was match of the year? <laughs> Sword Frankie the show. Wrestle fans <laughs> trying Sword so hard to keep us on track. I want to talk about wrestling so bad. <laughs> 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 you know, we talk about way more wrestling on this show than Zayman showed up. Oh, uh, God. <laughs> uh, I want to talk about wrestling. Is for of, I want to talk about wrestling. So would you guys confusion learn? of how to do the show and things on wrestling shows that aren't wrestling. <laughs> Discuss. Uh, Discuss. <laughs> no discussion. Let's talk about it. Uh, we had a discussion last night about because uh, they announced the Slammies and one of the uh, categories is Match of the Year, and we were like, "What would be the Match of the Year?" And there were a lot of options because a lot of good wrestling's happened. Oh, so, uh, okay. Let's first start with like you two, of course, Amen, Amen, Man, Mike. I want you to at least reiterate uh, a, a tiny bit in shortened version, not the half an hour we took after the wrap up last night. Uh, what do you think? Like, list some of the options. What do you think are are some surprising? You think uh, match of the year candidates that that you think should be in the mix? That we think will be or well should I, be. I, this is not what they what? select. We know how they oh, select okay. stuff. And yeah, I Personally, mean WWE is gonna have it. WWE is gonna have at least two rock matches in there. Yeah. Oh fuck yeah. yeah! Absolutely. Yeah. They don't. They cross our dreams. Um, yeah. My personal match of the year, <laughs> undoubtedly, in my opinion, and one that I definitely think deserves to be up in the list, uh, has to be um, the match from Payback between Dolph Ziggler and Alberto Del Rio. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that match was probably WWE's best storytelling <laughs> performance in like five years. I think that match was phenomenal. I like I mentioned before. I think WWE, the way they handled the concussion stuff, was great. The way they build drama, the way they handled the double turn, without just you know Del Rio being like you people or whatever. Like he his actions in the match forced you know the crowd forced the crowd to turn, forced the announcers to turn because they were looking at what they were seeing and they were like this is not right. Even though Del Rio is a guy we're supposed to cheer and we're supposed to be behind and Ziggler's supposed to be the heel. 
it worked out perfectly. And the action was great, but also the way they just used that the you know the the whole concussion storyline tying everything in and i i really think that's a phenomenal match like some of the like the little stuff like there's a part where um th- they go to the outside at one point and alberto del rio just shoves biggie langston for no reason and then biggie langston shoves him back and the referee ejects biggie langston and langston clearly says like i he shoved me first like, he shoved me first, and you're expecting me not to shove him. And Del Rio has a smile on his face because he realized what he just did. Because he's being a heel, not just because he's switching sides, but because of the actions that he's doing. Mm-hmm. I think that was a really phenomenal job of what they did. And I really hope they can even somewhat match it sometime going forward. Because the storytelling in that match was phenomenal, in my opinion. and made it match of the year for me. And I remember that discussion. It was like, this was not a wrestling clinic this was a story clinic absolutely yeah. with a lot of i mean a lot of good like action-based stuff in it of course like, the yeah, it got to a point where we where we got concerned for ziggler because mm-hmm. ziggler was getting just fucking beaten and and looked like he was just being destroyed which was the point of it and which is what made it so good you know, it wasn't like we were having to, like, you know, sort of fake this almost. Yeah. It was, you know, it was what was happening in front, in front of us, and it was phenomenal. Mm-hmm. And the concern of AJ when she came out, too, really added to it, even though she was kind of a heel at the time. And mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Everyone, everyone in that match did their roles perfectly. Definitely. So, yeah, that's my personal uh, pick for match of the year. What about you, Mike? You were in the mix of it with this last night. Uh, I- I don't know if I can decide on um, my match of the year. It might be the um, CM Punk Taker match, which, I mean, the build was amazing to it. The match itself yeah. was fantastic. It yeah. helps that I saw it live, obviously. Um, but I I think a dark horse, a nice dark horse candidate would be Damian Sandow's cash-in match because that was a match that was unexpected. Um, Cena looked very vulnerable at times, and he also had to resort to a lot of new maneuvers. That was when he broke out his little half Nelson bust, half Nelson uh, slam, and he broke out a few other things like that. And it was a really, really good match. It went over two commercial breaks, if I remember right. Mm-hmm. But I mean, we were discussing mm-hmm. how many how many Raw matches and how many pay per view matches were going to be listed. Mm-hmm. Just because there's been a lot more better Raw matches than there have been pay-per-view matches. Uh. <laughs> what the, LB? What, what, what is this reaction? I got one. Okay. You have to poop? <laughs> you gotta poop? Have you to gotta poop. go inside? I do. No, I poop inside like a person. But I, I have a match. I'm very excited about this one, Sorg. Okay. Because normally, with questions like this, it's just vague guessing. But I'm very proud of this one because I love it. In, in all of 2013, thus far, there has only been one pay-per-view that I have sought out a replay of, going so far as to own it after the fact. Uh, and that is uh, WWE SummerSlam. Mm-hmm. In that match, how's or in that? Pay-per-view housed one of the best matches I've seen all year, and it was the main event, and it was Daniel Bryan versus John Cena. That match was fucking fantastic. It was so good that, it, at least in my opinion, it beat another amazing match on that card, which was CM Punk versus Brock Lesnar. That's right, a John Cena match better than a CM Punk match. In my opinion, this match really, really showed what John Cena can do. It showed that he can rise to the level of his opponent, and I honestly felt that it should have shut up anybody who was a John Cena hater. It, of course, didn't, because this is the internet, and it's full of people who have less brain cells than they have fingers, but it was my pick for match of the year. Yeah, I I, I agree entirely. I love that pay-per-view, and I love that match, because sort of like going out what Lunchbox mentioned, like John Cena performed... Daniel Bryan's style without com- it coming off as a cheap imitation. 
without mm-hmm. it be, seeming as if he's doing this to try to like when he busts out that that Cena kind of around before and he just does it because he knows the internet will lose their shit. You well, know, that, he, was that match. Just, he was actually just okay. wrestling a great match and showcasing that, hey, I actually can wrestle like and, and wrestle properly and wrestle well, you know. So like that that I love that match so much and Punk Lesnar as well. Those, both of those matches were amazing. Yeah. That match also and had a really good build. story point in it too, mm-hmm. because like the um the segment before on the Raw when Daniel Bryan wouldn't chop or slap I forget which one it was slap uh, Cena in the face because that was what they did in Japan to show respect for them, and halfway through that match. Daniel Bryan just laid into Cena, like mm-hmm. with a huge slap across the face, and it, like it's like Bryan saying, "Okay, now you have my respect. Now let's fucking go." Mm-hmm. Absolutely, it's the little things that help a lot. Like it, 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 it's those little things that make a good match into a great match. Um, it's good stuff. Um, Sorg, did you name one? Do you have any? Any ones that stick out to you? I've been trying. I've been really trying to break it down. I've been looking through some old pay per views and stuff, trying to think something that's stuck out there. The thing uh, is that, the, and like we mentioned, like a, a lot of them, like there were a lot of amazing raw matches. You know, you know, and, and I, I think something that doesn't get, uh, and I know this won't, these won't have a chance to win because it's not top end people. But we've had so many good matches with tag teams lately. Um, mm-hmm. the, the, these last few go arounds, like you know, just stuff. The Shield being involved with stuff, and then, you know, some pairing that involves Daniel Bryan. Uh, you guys actually brought up last night a really good point, um, which I think was the coming of age of of of, of uh, Antonio Cesaro. You know, yep. uh, the the th- the gauntlet match that started Dead with sword. Daniel Bryan and Cesaro. No. <laughs> wait, 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 I'm not done though. You can have that too, but I, I just wanted to. Uh, and went into Jack Swagger and was really even decent. With Jack Swagger and still had. Uh, 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 Ryback at the end, right? It was an entire like half an hour of Raw. Um, but then also, you know, a lot of props go to stuff happening in NXT, like this two out of three falls match with Sami Zayn and, and Antonio Cesaro. Um, there's good uh, wrestling. Cassius Ono and no, William Regal. Regal. NXT, like, yeah, Rigo yeah. and Cassius. Uh, the Hart. I'm really becoming impressed with the Harper and, and Daniel Bryan uh, matches lately, too. We're like, realizing, mm-hmm. damn, Harper's a good big guy, you know? Um, why it, talent why it's it's impressive. i think anything this year has done it showcased that there are tons of talented mm-hmm. people and that's why and that this is right now this is a whole do we get into yeah we will this this is another discussion why that's why i go on to like this nxt thing is working and this idea of and i'll just plant the seed and i hope to have a greater greater discussion on this i don't want to get into this now but this idea of what if what if NXT is an expansion has an expansion and WWE has like an indie level play field in a regional setup and that feeds into WWE and it gives us better talent like we're already seeing from yeah. this version of NXT. But again, I don't want to get I into think, that discussion. And, but I also think like like the biggest thing I think I think the reason for this is something that NXT is I think doing. They're developing great wrestlers, they're developing great storytellers, they're developing great actors. Mm-hmm. They're developing people that are, you know, encompassing a lot of the skills to where and it's not even the indie guys. Like I know people think that, you know, oh you obviously if you bring up Luke Harper and Sami Zayn and all those guys, they're gonna put on amazing matches because they're amazing wrestlers. But even like Take last night, Daniel Bryan against Eric Rowan. Who thought Eric Rowan could bust out a really great match? Yeah. And he did it against Daniel Bryan. Like, there are tons of talented people down there. And I think uh, – and the, even the amount of people that they are going to hopefully bring up soon. Like, that talent pool is very stacked. And it, it that's the one thing that disappoints me when you when you have people like Wade Barrett – doing the bad news Barrett stuff where he's or say the Miz or Kofi Kingston who are good and they're they're somewhat established but they're also just there and then you have so many people that are willing to just break out and who are willing to just do new things and be creative and just go all out with it like it it really differentiates the two mm-hmm and I think that's what we're seeing. I think that's what we're going to see more of next year. Just to start. 
fun. Um, yeah. Bobby, do you have anything? I guess um, I you took stole it. mine. I'm sorry. We, we, you can expand on that. That's fine. <laughs> um, I was just going to say they probably won't pick that match since it was like a gauntlet match. Um, but that segment within that gauntlet match was amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, another one that nobody else said about um, that was a pretty decent match was, I think, because of the surprise. We didn't know if this person was going to win or not. Um, Mark Henry versus John Cena was yeah. pretty good. Yeah. Uh, so. Uh, again, I think build was better than mm-hmm. match in than that case, match. for for sure. But yeah, but we didn't know going yeah, into it. We didn't. We weren't sure for, who was going to win. It was the storyline. So. Cross of the year. I'm sorry. What's that? Mark, I'm sorry. But, uh, there's an award this year for double cross of the year. That's and if win. Mark Henry does not win that. <laughs> yeah, that is Mark such Henry a shame. Mm-hmm. That second well, on Raw was so. I, good. I looked on. I looked on WWE.com. And it looks like the app is going to determine who wins each slammy. I don't believe it. But voting on the app or just like well, the, voting app is going, is the, the app, app is going to become sentient and pick every winner. Yes. <laughs> it is Install Skynet. Install me. Install <laughs> me. Install <laughs> me. <laughs> Delete. Wow. What about you, Riz? You got something? I got one. Uh this goes back to the uh, build is makes the match. The Undertaker versus CM Punk at WrestleMania 29. They, they I, I don't want to say it because of, it was because of Paul Bear, but his death made this match even more watchable. He gave a personal level that was just mm-hmm. yeah they amazing. He played with the urn like <laughs> it was a puppet mm-hmm. talking to him. Oh shit! It's one of the times Paul Bearer I, even Paul, dressed up. I mean, Paul Heyman dressed up as Paul Bearer. Yeah, it's it's one. It was one of those times that uh, showcases like why Punk is so good because it allows him to be creative. It allows him to do something completely off the wall and different, to where you don't if expect. If anybody it. else who would have been fired on the spot. Well, yeah, absolutely. And CM Punk made it entertaining and to the point without. Mm-hmm. You know, without totally just doing it to be controversial. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Awesome. So let us know what do you think is actually. I'm there, there's got to be stuff missing. Like I said, the stuff with uh, the Shield and the Daniel Bryan stuff on Raw is just like you know brought things up to a whole new level. I think. Um, okay. Great Kelly. So tell me again. You know, we'll get out of <laughs> here. Uh, what? What? Great Kelly. Uh, what did you learn from wrestling this week? Real quick, Eamon. Oh, shit. Um, let's see. I learned from wrestling this week that AJ doesn't give a shit anymore. Like, she doesn't care. <laughs> she gives no fucks because she skipped around the ring the entire time during her tag team match. And then when she got pinned by Natalia, she didn't care because she's like, does it really matter? <laughs> what about you, Bobby? I learned that puking can be fun if well, done it properly. Wait, what was that, Bobby? Oh, yeah. I learned puking can be done if if done properly for entertainment value. Mm. The way they did that on SmackDown with Titus O'Neil was actually pretty good. I enjoyed it. And the fact mm. that they had a package for it, like it was coming into a yeah. pay-per-view. Um, mm. Wow. It was odd, but it, it was. I thought it was well done. I mean – not the puking part, but the, the how they set it up with him, Vicky forcing him to go into the um, eating contest and then him facing Cesaro knowing he was going to get spun around. Like everybody backstage was like, oh, he's going to get spun. He's going to get spun. And then t- leading to him getting sick in JBL's hat. So <laughs> it was good. What about you there, uh, Riz? I learned that Alberto Del Rio is stealing – uh, Zeb Coulter's job of throwing Mexicans over the border. Hmm. <laughs> His words. Not mine. LB? I learned that even I have a breaking point, and they found it with Wade fucking Barrett. <laughs> I wanted... I've, his whole career, since he debuted, I've wanted to believe... I've wanted him to achieve some kind of greatness. You can still believe. I'm, done. I'm just mm-hmm. done. They are. It's going to take a grand gesture, a great match, a huge gimmick before Fresh I'm Fox. a fan of Wade Barrett again. 
still believe. It makes me sad. I Go learned yourself, Bobby. the amazing application <laughs> that is Wrestling Revolution on Android on iOS. Look at that. Hmm. Is it I, a better game or anything? I'm Jay Enrico versus Sandman Tito. Enrico Palazzo. <laughs> and it's like all touch base. I just move my, my finger over here and I tap on the guy. It's like Diablo meets wrestling. Um, it's weird. Uh, guys, it's the Wrestling Man hey, Show. Hey, hey! What did I miss? What did I miss? Oh, I didn't set up my thing right. I'm sorry. Nope. No. Sorry, I thought Give I went me. around. What's up? What's up? God you learned something there, buddy? It. I learned Sorg forgets about me. Dude, you know... Uh, no, I, I learned that, um... Sin Cara gained 20 pounds and got a nice tattoo. <laughs> yes. And, and also, I learned wrestler. that Bray Wyatt watches Total Divas. <laughs> yes that was great that was great um all right with that hey wrestling mayhem show check us out wrestling mayhem show.com join us live here every tuesday night 9 p.m eastern at live.sorgatronmedia.com um check us out on twitter at mayhem show on facebook for the wrestling mayhem show on google plus as well a lot of great conversations at the uh wrestling mayhem show facebook group so tons of people Holy crap, there's like 20 people have joined that group in the last week. It's great to see some new names, new faces, new icons, new smiley faces um, in the mix in there, getting some different opinions. Uh, and as you see, we try to bring them here into the show. It really does fuel what we end up talking about here. Uh, buy the app. Check out the t-shirts at ProWrestlingTees.com. Go sign up. Let us know if you're coming out to the WMS Fan Appreciation Night. It's free, damn it. Um... And uh, with that, thank you, everybody. Thank, uh, thank you to our panel. We'll see you guys next week. You're Mayhem welcome. out. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Wait for the